Michael, good evening. OK, well, all bets now on tomorrow then and what's going to come out of it. I mean, even if the decision to save the euro is made, though, within the next 48 hours, say, Angela Merkel's then gone on to say that it's still going to take years to implement the solutions. So can the eurozone really wait that long? I mean, if you look behind me, we have this euro sign. It's not illuminated. It's dark. Normally, it's supposed to be illuminated. So this might be a bad omen for that, what we can expect from this EU summit. Every week, we have a new emergency meeting. Every week, we have new hopes. Every week, we have new disappointments. And in my opinion, this EU summit will lead to nothing because I cannot hear anything which, which, which comes close to a solution. The only thing that they are producing there in Brussels is a catastrophe, a catastrophe of rescue efforts. And this will lead next week more or less uh, to chaos, catastrophe and collapse of the whole system possibly. Because as long as we don't have any solution for this euro problem and uh, we are short in time at the moment, we will uh, have bad consequences mm. in the coming future. Michael, you tailed off what you said there, that grim warning with possibly. Let's try and focus in on that at this, what they're calling this 11th hour we've seen. As you've said, so many summits, so many gatherings, so many analysts talking. It's been going on and on, round in circles. The stakes are so high now. What if it doesn't turn out? What if something positive doesn't come out tomorrow? Where are we going to be next week? I mean, in my opinion, we will have a, uh, uh, very bad consequences for the financial markets next week. In my opinion, politicians are not aware what is on stake at the moment, and they don't know what is really going on. Um, it is known that the only solution is more or less euro bonds, but Germany doesn't like to play this card. So uh, uh, the only solution is that we go on in little, little, little steps. But we don't. We need now. What we need now is a very, very huge step. And as I said earlier, that uh, in Germany the politicians are against euro bonds is nothing else than to say we are against the euro because a common currency cannot exist without a common bond market. And when you say now, okay, we don't want a bond market, a common bond market, then you say indirectly that you are against the euro. And one more point. I think most of the politicians among this euro family don't really know what is on stake. They behave like first-class passengers in a Titanic that is already sinking. And what politicians say right now, okay, we have time, nothing, everything is all right, but this chip is sinking and there is no solution to keep it alive. Michael, what about this move by the European Central Bank to um, cut borrowing to 1% to, to down, down uh, 0.25? Is that going to make much of a difference? In my opinion, it doesn't make a big difference. Uh, we will have further rate cuts in the future and it won't help. And this is also another problematic point. When you look at Japan, when you look at the United States, Fed there and the ECB, uh, what is left? Which tool do they have left in order to solve this crisis? This uh, uh, rate cut that we saw today is long overdue and it was more or less a suicidal act of uh, Mr. Trichet during the last months to take them up. But mm. now they have to come down. They will go to zero. The problem will be still there and politicians and uh, central bankers as well don't have any solution for this crisis. The crisis is over debt. And if you are honest, there is no real solution but a currency reform or something hard, or, or, or bankrupts, bankruptcy of governments. All right, Michael Ross, it's a grim, it's a grim outlook you're painting there, but it kind of makes sense what you're saying. I guess uh, economic analyst and author of the book, The Currency Crash, I guess we'll be talking to you next week as well. Thank you.